Let's assume that we have a project that will last for three years. At year zero, we have an initial investment of 100 million, and then we will generate free cash flow of 40 million at the end of each year for the next three years. So we calculated earlier internal rate of return, IRR. What do I mean by internal rate of return? Why did we use the word internal? So it's called internal rate of return because it assumes that all cash flow generated will be reinvested at the same internal rate of return, at the same higher rate of internal rate of return. For example, in year one here, we generated $40 million. What we're going to do with these $40 million, we are going to reinvest it at the same IRR. In year two, we generated another $40 million. What we're going to do with these $40 million reinvested at IRR. Therefore, we discover that our internal rate of return is overestimated. Why it's overestimated? Because when you decide to make a new project, usually we have limited fund. That's why we call it capital rationing, which means you make a list of all feasible projects and we choose the projects that will give us the highest return. Consequently, when we generate some profits, some cash flow from this project and we like to reinvest it, usually the market is saturated with the first project. So you cannot imitate this project and get the same higher return. So what you need to do is you need to go with the second best project, which means the second project that will give you a high return, but not as higher as the previous one. Consequently, when you reinvest this cash flow, you're going to reinvest it at a lower rate compared to IRR. And that's why we're going to calculate a new tool, which is called the modified internal rate of return. In this one, which is called MIRR, which is the first letter of each word, our reinvestment rate will be lower than internal rate of return, but it must be bigger than or equal to WAC. Therefore, the lowest rate of return that we will accept from any project will be equal to WAC. And that's why in any question, if I don't give you a reinvestment rate, it shows that we will accept the lowest rate, which is equal to WAC. So how are we going to get the formula of modified internal rate of return? The formula is pretty easy that we studied before with time value of money. Do you remember the future value of single cash flow? Future value equal present value multiplied by open bracket one plus I close bracket to the power N. We need to rearrange this formula to put I in one side, all other variables in the other side. So we're going to divide by present value. So future value divided by present value is equal to one plus I to the power N. Then in order to get rid of N, we will multiply the power by each side by one over N. So future value divided by present value, all of this to the power one over N is equal to one plus I. Then we need to subtract one from each side. So our interest is equal to future value divided by present value, all of this to the power one over N minus one. And this will be the formula for our modified internal rate of return. But we will use our own terminology. So our I, instead of writing I, we will write MIRR, modified internal rate of return. Instead of future value, we will write it as terminal value, but it has the same definition. Terminal value is the same as future value, which is the future value for all our cash inflows to the last year. Divided by present value refers to our initial investment. Close bracket, all of this to the power one over N minus one. And this will be our formula for modified internal rate of return. We calculated earlier IRR. Now we need to calculate modified internal rate of return at each scenario of WAC. So let's start with WAC 9%. We need to calculate first our terminal value, which is the future value. So in year one, we receive free cash flow of 40 million. So to calculate the future value to year three, we need to move two periods in the future. Therefore, it will be 40 multiplied by one plus 9% to the power two. Plus in year two, we receive 40 million. I need to move the future value to year three. So I have one period, so I will get 40 million multiplied by one plus 9% to the power one. So I need to calculate 40 million in year three, which is 40 million. So this will give us 131.12. Then our modified internal rate for return formula is open bracket, terminal value divided by initial investment, close bracket to the power one over n minus one. It's equal to our terminal value we just calculated as 131.12 divided by initial investment of 100. Don't put a negative sign close bracket to the power one over three, because here the project will last for three years, minus one. This will give us a modified internal rate of return of 9.45%. Therefore, our MIR is 9.45%. So what will be our decision rule? We will accept the project if modified internal rate of return is bigger than WAC. Then let's calculate our MIR at WAC 9.7%. 
So we need to calculate our future value, which is called terminal value. Our terminal value is equal. In year one, we receive 40 million. We need to calculate the future value, which means we need to move forward for two years to reach year three. So we'll get 40 million multiplied by open bracket, one plus 9.7%, close bracket to the bar two. Plus in year two, we receive 40 million. I need to move from year two to year three, which is one period. So I'll say 40 million multiplied by open bracket, one plus 9.7%, close bracket to the bar one. Plus in year three, we have 40 million. So I'll say plus 40 million. This will give us 132.02. Then we need to substitute in our MIR formula, which is terminal value divided by initial investment, all of this to the power one over N minus one. This is equal to our terminal value, which we just calculated is 132.02, divided by initial investment of 100, close bracket, all of this to the power one over three minus one. This will give us MIR equal to 9.7%. Therefore, when we will be indifferent, which means some investors will accept, some investors will reject the project, if MIR is equal to WAC, and this will be our decision rule. Our last scenario is if WAC is 10%. Let's calculate our terminal value. So it will be 40 multiplied by 1 plus 10% to the power 2, because this is the value we receive in year 1. In year 2, we receive 40 million, so we need to move forward by one year. So we'll say 40 multiplied by 1 plus 10% to the power 1, plus 40 in year 3, I'll say plus 40. This will give us 132.4. Then we need to substitute in our MIR formula, which is terminal value divided by initial investment, all of this to the bar one over N minus one. This will give us terminal value of 132.4 divided by initial investment of 100, close bracket to the bar one over three minus one. This will give us 9.81%. So when will we reject the project if MIR, our modified internal rate of return, is lower than our cost of capital, WAC? Therefore, can we make a relationship between internal rate of return, modified internal rate of return, and WAC? Yes. If we will accept the project, we know that IRR will be bigger than MRR will be bigger than WAC. If we will be indifferent, our IRR must be equal to MRR must be equal to WAC. If we reject the project, I know that IRR will be lower than MRR will be lower than WAC. That's why all these relationships must hold. And that's why capital budgeting topic is very easy because you can make a lot of relationships, which means if NBV is positive, NBV is bigger than zero, you know that profitability index will be bigger than one, you know that IRR will be bigger than WAC, you know that MIRR will be bigger than WAC, you know that IRR will be bigger than MIRR will be bigger than WAC. And you do the same for indifferent and reject projects.